Okay. Hello, YouTube. This is Gary here, um, One-Eyed Gary, and uh, this is our Starlink antenna that's on, mounted on top of my Jeep. And uh, this is a first test um, pretty far away from home. I'm 22 miles from my home location, and it's snowing here at Porcupine Reservoir and Cinnamon Creek Camp. I'll show you around a, a little bit here. Let's snowing lightly as you can see. I'm going to close this up here. Okay, I'm going to switch the camera and tell you a little bit about this setup. Here goes. Here's the switch here. I should be able to switch the camera. Am I a, uh, <laughs> not a pro YouTuber, I admit. Let's see, there's got to be a switch to switch the camera here. <laughs> okay. No, I'm touching all over the screen here and Oh well, let's see. Maybe I'll have to. I'll just give you a tour <laughs> this way. Okay. Okay. So anyway, we're here in northern Utah, and I've had Starlink working for about a month, and uh, and I'm really interested in using it in remote locations. Of course, uh, Starlink has you register your service address, and it's only guaranteed to work at your home. But um, in the general vicinity, it does work, and I'm in an area where some friends really have a need for it to work because a friend manages Cinnamon Creek Camp, which is up here by Porcupine Reservoir, and they have no internet options. There's no cell phone coverage here, and I think they tried HughesNet, and it was a pretty long latency, so they're really interested in Starlink for this. So what I did like a, about a week ago was, was mount the Starlink antenna on the Jeep here so I can go various locations. Certainly works in Cache Valley around my home, but we're actually 22 miles from my home now up here and I'm kind of surprised it worked especially because of the limited view of the sky it has here so maybe I could I could run a speed test or get a statistics uh, graph here but but um, it is a pretty remote location and the trees aren't too far away so so it's really kind of surprising that the Starlink is working at this location I guess it's just enough view of the sky to work and uh, let's see mm -hmm. what else can I say um I did try it when moving actually if uh, when I was moving along a straight line it remained connected even when the Jeep was moving even when I started turning about 10 or 15 degrees I still had a connection until I got to about 20 or 30 degrees and then I lost the connection. That was with the, with the previous version of the software. I've seen when moving my Jeep to other locations that Starlink was taking about five or ten minutes to initialize. But today when it came up here it only took about one minute and I saw the firm firmware version is newer. So I'm hoping that Starlink is kind of getting better and better at initializing and will eventually support earth stations in motion. The, the application from SpaceX to the FCC was for um, for Starlink to be used on moving vehicles such as boats, aircraft, and maybe RVs. And and uh, the interesting thing about that application was that it said that um, electrically the uh, Starlink phased array antenna will be the same as the version we can get now in the beta test program. So that's really interesting if the GPS hardware and maybe some accelerometers would be used to to keep track of the antenna as it moves around and still have an internet connection when moving. So uh, let's see, I think I'll try on this video, I don't have my computer, oh I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about the power system. Since Starlink draws about 100 watts of energy, sort of I didn't, it can drain your a battery pretty quickly. And so to make it a little more useful in a mobile situation. I've been meaning wanting to do this for a while. I just used a separate a 12 volt battery with an inverter. The, uh, the Starlink power over ethernet injector is connected to the inverter. So it does, you can hear the fan of the inverter a little bit. But the thing is, uh, rather than just relying on the energy in the battery, I added this DC to DC, a step up boost charger, which can charge this auxiliary isolated battery from from the vehicle 12 volt system. But when you turn off the ignition of the Jeep, uh, this will be switched and it'll turn off and it won't drain the, the starter battery and leave you with a dead battery. So this, this charger isn't in use in mobile operation. It's just for connecting to AC when I'm at home and uh, not 
want to charge it up to 100% without without use running the engine of the battery. So that's kind of the power setup here. And right now the, the Starlink uh, PoE cable is just going up there. The mount was made in less than an hour. We just, uh, mechanical engineering friend, thanks Eric, <laughs> just, uh, just had this ghetto mount idea where we used two by fours and screws and that's all. So Starlink mobile installation here. It's not really intended to be uh, fully functional in mobile operation, or now, but is planned in the future. So let's see, I guess that's about it for now. If I get a chance, I'll edit in a statistics graph. You can see, I think there were a couple periods of, of obstruction, but I did use a video chat call and Wi-Fi calling and ran some speed tests and it was pretty typical. I think the speed I saw was around 70 megabits per second. So about, um, uh, sometimes it pops up, it has popped up higher for me up to 294 megabits per second, but usually on the, for the most part, it's been 50 to 100, 100 megabits per second. So uh, that's all. Maybe I'll make some other videos as, as we get to uh, test new things here and, and uh, have a good one from Porcupine Reservoir in northern Utah. See you later.